United government had on the 26th of January announced that it would commence the enforcement of the Excellent Transport Sector Reform Law from the 1st of February. The law bans the operation of motorcycles, popularly known as Okada and tricycles, in some areas in the state. It also includes the ban of their movement on 10 major highways and bridges. Uh, Section 15 of the Lagos uh, Road Traffic Law 2012 is what the government based their assertion on and the enforcement on. The consequences of this enforcement has however been positive and negative as expressed by the resident of the state. I used to take a bike within the rural area to uh, TBS to go and enter BRT to Oshodi. Now there's nothing to take me from inside market now to BRT side. The pros and cons of the restriction and ways through which the government can balance this to divide is what we are looking at on this episode of Big Story. You're welcome. I'm Ini John Mekwa. <laughs> Was selling food stock, so the thing did not move. It's not moving. In fact, he cannot afford our meal in a day. I decide to enter the tricycle business. It's a man work, but I love the work. Whether out of necessity or love for the job, riding tricycle for commercial purposes was fast becoming a norm for some women in Lagos State. Chidi Maunwoha even earned the nickname Ada Jesus at Ikeja area where she was operating. But now she's back to where she was five years ago. A single mother of two with no means of income. Okay, look at me as a lady. For 15 years I've been a single mother. No husband, nobody to assist. I only sustain with this Mara. And now you say I should not come out again. Which work are you going to give it to me now? Okay, if you ask me now my qualification, I don't, I don't go to school. I don't have any degree, I don't have any PhD or this thing to go and begin to look for work. Even if I have to eat, I don't have any godfather that will say, okay, fix this person, fix this person. Then what do I do now? The children that is in school, what am I going to do? Each every day, I spend no less than 1,800 for the transportation. The right now is off. What do I do? The state government is, however, quick to remind riders that this enforcement is actually not a total ban, but restriction in areas which are perceived to be too busy for the operations of commercial motorcycles and tricycle. To, to us, as a operator, as a marrow operator, it's a total ban. Out of, let's say in the local government, let me, let, let's just assume out of 20 roads, and you say you leave only two roads for marrow to operate. Is that a total ban? It's total ban. The only thing I see uh, concerning the, the uh, uh, for our own safety that they are saying is the only Marua that run bridge. If they say uh, Marua should not clamp bridge, we are okay with that. But for the ban, go and check all the roads that they say you should not, which, uh, Marua should not operate. It's total ban to me. Okay, safety. We should stay home because of our safety. I want them to consider how many people is driving this Marua. And to my own understanding, when they want to bring this Marua in, I, uh, uh, from uh, this our former governor, Buba Marua, he named it NAPEP, National Poverty Elevation Program. So he bring it to reduce poverty. So are they now increasing poverty for us? This is the question that has sent many commercial tricycle and motorbike riders on a protest led by some branded outfit who say that they've gone through the process of getting registered and following laid down rules to operate in the state. Of democracy, and this is why you have expected 
We are not blaming you for that. But do have a written petition to the house. If you have it, you can deliver it. So if just open it and deliver it to me. Okay. Okay. Office of the we are not confronting them. It's a word of appeal because we are stakeholders. We are all citizens of this country and we are residents of this state. We appeal to Lagos State Government to allow us to do our business. We are registered. We, are, we can be tracked. We have BVNs. We have national identity cards. We, have, we are duly registered. Before you join this company, there will be a lot of screening. And there will be police report backing you that this guy is cleared of all criminal activities. So what I want to appeal to Lagos State Government is to allow this company. If they say they want to ban street Okada people, I don't have any quarrel with that. Anybody that wants to do Okada transportation business should come and go through the screening. If he passes, good luck to him. If he doesn't pass through, then good, good luck to him also. But I want to appeal to good citizens of Lagos State, people with good conscience, to appeal to this government. We pay our taxes. We pay all our dues, as I went do. So as our, design, as our January 4th this year, we received our papers. Everything dolly pay, fully paid on New Year's Day. So we don't owe government and we don't we make sure that we don't violate any traffic rules. So if other companies or unregistered bike men flaunt Lagos State traffic rules, we don't. Government should look into immigrants, I mean illegal immigration. Those people that come into this country, they make the number of this country to increase. Meanwhile they are they are they are aliens. They are illegal foreigners foreigners in this country who are not registered. They make this country increase by population. So they need to look into that aspect, not just that they will just come and close down a company who is registered and people are managing, citizens of this country who are jobless and managing, and they will just come and ban it just like that. It's not working. So government should give us our job back. That's what we are crying for. To further drive the message home, the Chief Executive Officer of Gokada, Fahim Saleh, took to YouTube to appeal to the government to soft pedal on the enforcement of the regulation with the hashtag regulate, not ban. It's tough for an entrepreneur who's trying to innovate, who's investing his own money, when this is not my country. It's, it's a country that I, I feel has amazing potential and has amazing people, and they just need the opportunity to shine. And the drivers that were at Gokata, every one of them wasn't there because they just wanted to make money. They were there because they had families. They had children, they had dreams. They wanted to start businesses. They wanted to go to school. They had degrees already, but they couldn't find jobs. For many, Gokata wasn't the final place for their lives. It was a stepping stone to get to that next endeavor. However, legal practitioner Christian Love does not agree with the sentiments of Mr. Sally. We are uh, attorneys to a couple of uh, investors. Um, we are the for, uh, foreign direct investment attorney to a conglomerate that has more than 86 countries. Um, and we have found out that most of the invest investors really, they are not coming here to make Nigeria great for lack of a better word. They want to make their money. So whatever, while everybody is uh, crying for foreign direct investment so that you can facilitate and fast track the growth, uh, the, the growth of uh, businesses and increase productivity in the nation. We need investors, but we must insist we must insist that they do the right thing. You can't go to Dubai without an emirate. Even if you want to invest all your money, we need to, we need to increase the brand of the nation and insist that nobody is coming here without doing their due diligence. They are designated uh, uh, operations from CAC to immigration to a lot of, and we have the combo, we have a lot of lawyers, and we also have independent uh, people that are solving the problem. There's another group of people who've been feeling the adverse effects of the enforcement of the law. 
A majority of the about 21 million residents in Lagos depend on public transport system to get to their destinations daily. Adjusting to the reduction of options available to them has been a tough one. I buy market finish inside the Mandela's now. I used to take a bike within the rural area to uh, TBS to go and enter BRT to Oshodi. Now there's nothing to take me from inside market now to BRT side. Will I walk from here now to TBS? So there's many areas like that that there's no motor or anything can pick unless Okada or Marua for a little, little journey like that. Please consider. Consider the matter, please. You can see it's not easy. We've been here since morning and there's no bus. They, the buses that are coming, they are all calling Ikeja. And I'm going to Amole bus stop. They said they, they are not going there. That if I even want to go, I have to pay 200 naira, which we normally pay 100 naira. Yes, for those who have hiked the prices, we're talking to the union. Um, we've warned them. Uh, it's not fair. Um, and we're going to clamp. Uh, we're going to clamp down on it and uh, make sure that um, the fare remain as uh, we agreed. With sentiments building up, enforcing the law may be demanding. That's what the Commission of Police, Hakim Odumosun, faced when he decided to ensure that Lagos has the desired look. His resolve was tested when he met a group of persons living with disability and have been earning their living through the operations of commercial tricycle. Yes, we are a citizen. We are a citizen in Nigeria. We are begging before. Now we are working, but they want to do this for us. The law covers all and must be obeyed. And then a man in an officer's attire is caught breaking the law. Even after he was caught, he decides to try one last time to escape. There are other arrests around Victoria Island, many of them attempting to escape after realizing the consequences of their actions. Definitely, it's not going to be easy. And there is no law that you want to enforce without having difficulties. So you don't enforce any law on platter of gold, and that's why it is law. When anything becomes law, it means that some people are doing what they ought to do or what they ought not to do. So that's why it is. But the fact is that the law has been in existence since 2002, and a lot of awareness has been done. So anybody found for letting the law now is doing that deliberately. And there's nobody above the law. We got the information why we are doing the advocacy that they will resist and we got prepared for them. But within the ambit of the law and the fundamental rights. The law has provisions for the punishment. If there's no punishment, nothing is the law. So it's the consequence of that action or inaction that make people not to comply. So the various sections of the law, we have the task force there. We have the mobile court. Mobile court is out now. Two teams are out with other teams going out. So they are not in my team now. So there are another two teams now. These six teams now going out. So the one that we are picking that is not in my team now, we take them to the task force, all of them. They are the mobile court. We sit on them now and make pronouncements in line with provisions of the law. We are, we are not just going to collect their vehicle or their motorbike and the people and confiscate. They must go through judicial process. Where pronouncement will be made in line with provisions of the law, thereafter we make the enforcement. But normally, once they do it now, it is confiscated, the court made that pronouncement. And subsequently, they will be crushed. They are not listening to them. They are not that they are going to pay a fine and release. They are crushing anyone that's confiscated. They must go through judicial pronouncement before they can go through that crushing.
The Minister of Transport, Chibuke Amichi, tries to balance the outcome of this enforcement, speaking from his experience as a former governor. It's for the state government to decide why, what he wants to do. There are a lot of reasons why the state government may have decided that. that I'm, I'm not speaking as a minister for transport, I'm speaking as a former governor. For me, when I was in River State, they were using motorcycles to rob and kidnap people. And the, as a, as the police can never get to them because you're using a car as against motorcycle. So I banned motorcycle for that. I don't have peace. Number of accidents. The orthopedic hospital was full every day. And they didn't care. Right? That was the reason. I don't know the reason why the governor of Lagos State banned it. Only he would tell you because he, 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 he would look at it. For, for a governor, the larger interest, the interest of the larger society is by far outweigh that of a particular group of people. So I'm sure he's may have made his decision based on the interest of the greater majority of, of Lagosians. Now, but he has a problem to face. And I'm sure he must have addressed it in his mind before he took that decision. That is unemployment and increase in crime. Because all those Okada riders and tricycle riders had provided for themselves a means of livelihood. Now, if you ban it and there is no alternative, the chances are that some of them may go into into crime. But believe me, he may have made that decision based on the, the interests of the greater majority. The state government promises that the consequences have been taken into consideration and ways to cushion the pain of the people have started and would be improved upon. We're bringing about 600 new buses of various sizes that will also be complementing this yard to ensure that will bring about immediate relief to our people and to the teeming population of Lagos that needs to move from one point to the other. Uh, we launched about 14 boats. Um, we are trying to ramp it up to 30 and then we're looking for, uh, we're, we're encouraging the uh, private sector to actually join and participate um, in developing our waterways. Uh, apart from that, we deployed about 65 uh, big buses uh, from Lagos Bus Services Limited and we're hoping to get about 550 um, out of uh, the depot and then um, deploy them also. So we have about 600 buses uh, by the end of this month or maybe early next month. And then apart from that, we're also talking to a lot of investors to bring in small buses that will serve um, the inner routes. And then we are trying to ramp up um, the rail transport. And so there's a lot of things going on to ensure that um, people can move seamlessly from one point to the other. Uh, the good news is that the bus reform has started. It's not something that we're starting from scratch. Uh, we already have uh, investors who are interested. We have um, divided Lagos State into uh, five zones. And uh, so what we're just doing is mapping out the routes for the various operators. And then that will be unfolded uh, very soon. One of the reasons which the government has given as a motivation for this enforcement is that over 10,000 accidents related to commercial motorbikes recorded in the General Hospital only. Ms. Onuaha draws the attention of the government to the possibility that the root of the problem may not have been solved. I remember last time they stopped Okada, it's the same Okada people that enter Marwa. It's the same set of people that enter Marwa. Now you are stopping Marwa. It's the same set of people that are going to Adam or any buses. It's the same people. And you remember the same attitude. The person left in Akada, came with Marwa. It's the same behavior. Is he going to go? He need to call them. He need to train them. He need to coach on them. You know, sometimes mentally, someone will be very nice. Ah, he's beautiful. Oh, she's, she's beautiful. Oh, he's handsome. But mentally, he's not. He or she is not. We need to go down because we have so many people in our states that went to school to study. Abi, so in these states or in this organization, in the local government, in this now from local government you will start. You will not start from states. You have to look down from your local government first. You scream the local government, then you come to states. Then you get result what you are looking for. Uh, 
From the eyes of Mr. Love, the thousands who have embraced the means of livelihood in the transport sector are so charged because this is just a quick fix and their real potentials lie untapped to their detriment and that of the country. Get the data, for example, of all the people that are driving Mara and see, okay, let's do a, 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 a let's do what, what we call a psychometric analysis of what's their skill, what are the skills that they have. And so we can now challenge the government that even these people, before they started Marwa, they were bricklayers. So that's the reason we're having a, a, a low standard in uh, a lower standard in the quality of the buildings we're having. Uh, they, are, they were mechanics. That's why we have. So we're going to really solve the issues and look at how do we help them. How do we help them maximize their skill where they have? For those who really want to drive Marwa and Okada or get involved in transport, how do we tra train them? How do we ensure that they collaborate with law enforcement agents? How do they become informant to even be able to give government information where there is going to be crisis? These are all the things we need to look at. That's why I'm throwing it, uh, because sovereignty lies with the people, not with government. Sovereignty lies with the people and the media channels, for example, is, is, is a powerful tool that can compel government to sit down, to rise uh, in, in defense of the people. But the way we're going to do it, it's not saying they are wrong, it's showing them how it needs to be done. And how, how do we do it? We galvanize the best, the brightest, the fittest and the most competent to be able to uh, to be able to show the way forward. Because until you have sovereign individuals in the nation, no, no government is going to be able to respond to our agitation. Because until you have a critical mass of enlightened citizens that are easy to govern, difficult to rule, and impossible to enslave, you can't you can compel government to deliver good governance. So I do not see this as a as a crisis, I see it as an opportunity to start the conversation. I see this as an opportunity, opportunity to maximize the lives of every single young boy that is 14 year old driving Mara that should be in school. I see it in the life of that, we call them Malo, you call, you, we denigrate them. But they are trying to find for their, for, for their daily life, for their daily living. I see it as an opportunity to influence their life positively so that they can see that this nation cares for them and then they can contribute their quota and they're not going to become instruments of violence and evil and, uh, and, and costing us more because insecurity costs us more than productivity. So when we take care of the people, like, like section two said, that the welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary purpose of governance. Once that becomes the, the anthem we all sing, then everybody will know that this government cares for us. It seems the restriction has come to stay, but it also opens up some business opportunities in the transport sector. But of course, creating the enabling environment is the responsibility of the government and the people have to embrace those opportunities. That's our story for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ini John Mekwa.